it's Thursday and today we are making Franken patterns again. Now this time I thought I would inject just a little bit more chaos into the mix and we've come up with a list of challenges decided by dice roll. So those are up on your screen at the moment and you can pause now if you'd like to read them. <laughs> We did learn our lesson last time with so many of you commenting that you wanted to play along with us. So the patterns for my three pieces will be included in today's video and the pattern for Lee's three pieces will be in her video over on Skein Spider, which you should go and check out and see how she did with this challenge as well. Anyway, Lee went first last time, so this time it's my turn to start us off. So the question is, what piece do I start with? So flexibility is king in these challenges. I don't want to lock us down too soon. But at the same time, particularly with all of the additional challenges kind of bolted onto this one here, I do feel like it's up to me to establish a base piece pretty early on to give us a foundation for the rest of the design work. So I think I'm going to go with body. Okay, so we just got to roll the dice. And it looks like it landed on four. Let's see what that challenge is. I rolled the fish theme. I thought we'd broken this curse. So I had been gifted a fish theme for my body piece and I started drawing a bunch of fish bodies. I was filming in a different place for this piece so I'm sorry if the lighting is extremely strange for just this shot. Anyway, I then diversified into sharks, seahorses, which had potential, jellyfish, and a starfish until I realised that starfish are literally just a lump without the legs. I traced around just the bodies to get a feel for the shapes and narrowed it down to either the seahorse or the jellyfish. Or the turtle? No, not the turtle. In the end, it was unexpectedly the jellyfish that I found to be most interesting to me, so I whipped up a frilly little dome and sent it off to Lee. Okay, so I have received the instructions for part two. Oh yeah, I see some definite tricky stuff. I see some flat rows and some round rows, and I have to start, start stuffing pretty early on, which usually indicates a more complex shape. So we'll see how it goes with my little jellyfish there. I am back in my usual filming setup now, so enjoy the return to decent lighting. Lee had a few tricks in store for me here, but she very kindly warned me about it. There was a very slick use of short rows, as well as some trickery to create some raised ridges. That was a very crafty use of short rows. Might have to try that again at some point, because uh, it meant that we didn't have to work into the ends of the short rows, but we still got our corner, so love that for us. Love how much I learned from these particular collabs. Where am I up to? There I am. There is piece two. <laughs> so the piece two is reminding me a lot of the seahorse body I very nearly made in part one. But the colour change and the spike stitch kind of make it read like a giant eyeball. So now it's my turn to design piece three. Now piece one was always meant to be the head, but piece two is clearly the more dominant piece in terms of size and in shaping. So that kind of bumps piece one into more of a head roll which kind of leaves me with limbs as my option. So let's just roll the dice real quick and see what challenge we got. And it's an eight, which is a multiples challenge where I have to make at least four of this piece, which is perfect for legs. So we're gonna make some legs. So now I just have to work out what kind of legs a monster marshmallow like this is gonna have. So. Gecko legs are an option, but I feel like they are very specific and I like to have things a little bit broader than that. Now a crab leg or a spider leg would give it a bit of a monster vibe, which does work with the pieces we already have. I do really like the idea of going with it like a triangular stump though, kind of like I did for my pig uh, a couple of videos ago. Just because they have that added flexibility of being arms or legs or spines on the back or horns on the head or even just those little like face thingies. So. I think I'm gonna go with those. Plus, if I'm going to ask Lee to make four of something, I'm gonna feel a little bit less guilty about that if I keep the piece fairly, like, small. <laughs> a little less time intensive. So I think triangle stumps is the way we're gonna go. 
So I rolled an eight for this one, as you saw, and that means that my challenge is to make four of this piece. <laughs> Though between you and me, I might be, end up making six of this piece and just see how that all turns out. So I feel like it's a nice, flexible piece to steer us into the second half of this challenge. Okay, so it is time for piece number four. Okay, so piece four. It looks like Lee got hit with the multiple piece challenge as well, um, which means that there are just a lot of pieces to this little guy. That's all right though. It looks like she has very kindly limited herself the same way I tried to, just to make it not too punitive. And we only have three rows to do in this particular piece. So let's just check that out. So we're just gonna whip that up really quickly now and see what we're working with. Okay, we are leaving a long yarn tail and this time I'll do what I'm told <laughs> because normally I don't. There we go, so like this is our piece and then it comes with some instructions and that is to, starting from the slipknot end, which is this end, tightly roll your piece. So we are creating a little floral, floral bits. Oh, it's a little rose, I think. Well, that's what it looks like to me anyway. So that's probably what I'll, what I'll use it as. At least, at least one of them. I'll make a little flower with one of them. God, that's adorable. Can you imagine that as like a little ear? A little ear puff. So the next step is to just like a sew all the base chain together. So we'll finish one like that. So would you kindly get out of the way? Thank you. I think that's sewn together enough for our purposes. So there is piece four. So now we're up to piece five and piece five is back to me. Now this is my last chance to add a piece to this. We're just gonna have a really good look and play with our existing pieces and see what we feel is missing. So like this could be a tail or an ice stalk. Right, so I feel like there's a little something going on there. Okay, all right, I feel like I'm onto something here. Now just a reminder, this will all probably change by the time we get to our final creature. So uh, don't get too attached to any of the single configuration you see me doing. Okay, I think that's got a really nice flow and proportion to it. It's almost like a turtle, but like a monster turtle. And then I've got these little ear tufts, these little flowers. I were a monster eyeball, how would I want my tufts to grow? So what do I think is missing? We could do a little tail, or we could do something around this eye to make it look like more of a dedicated eyeball piece, though I do already like the colour changes and what that's doing up there. This could be like the bottom eyelid, we could make him a top eyelid. Oh, but first we just need to get our challenge. So I've decided on like an eyelid slash tail <laughs> which is very specific let's hope that the challenge will help with that 11 use at least one unusual stitch okay well there's already fan stitches used pretty prolifically throughout this piece we've used spike stitches uh like kind of a fan and kind of a fan so like that will help it blend in a little bit better with the other pieces so that's not a bad challenge yeah I'll work out how to use that, never fear. I'm just concerned that I'm putting the burden of another major piece back onto Lee. So we'll see how we go. Okay, so we've worked up to 24 stitches there. Where if we rounded that out, it would work as an eyelid. And now for my specialty stitch, we will be doing picots today because I have literally just finished filming my uh, bearded dragon pattern, which this might be from last week, it might be from a couple of, a couple of weeks ago now, I don't know. Uh, so I just, I haven't quite gotten all the picots out of my system. So we're going to picot the whole way around. There we go. So lots of applications for that piece. I'm going to send that off to Lee now and see what we get back for piece number six. And piece six has arrived. Now, cards on the table here. Lee and I have had a conversation about this piece already. And that is because she also rolled an eight, which meant that she would have to make at least four of this piece. 
But after a little bit of a discussion, we decided that we would use her backup role as her official challenge, and we would just be gently encouraged to make multiples of this particular piece. The dice were super committed to making this sucker take as long as possible. Like, a hundred piece challenge. Should we? No. No. But maybe? Okay, so this is where we left off. And piece six has arrived, so we're gonna whip up one of those real quick. Now this piece does say that I can adjust the shape of it by changing how long those little chains are in the loops, but I figured I'd just make one exactly as listed to start with. And once I have a better idea of what I'm going to make with all of my shapes, <laughs> then we'll work out exactly if I need to adjust this one. Good to have options though. Okay, so we've got kind of like a circular floral of some kind. These two pieces together kind of give me butterfly wing vibes. With a little bit of colour work, we could make that happen if we wanted to. So I am supposed to have more than one of these pieces, but as with the others, I've kind of just made one to start with. So now comes the time when we play fast and loose with the shapes that we have and see how we can mash them all together and turn them into something. <laughs> Let us lay out the pieces. Alright, so first up we had piece one, piece two, and pieces three, piece four, there's a couple of little flowers, piece five was this nice spiky disc, and then piece six, which is another kind of disc with some ruffles on it. So looking at the pieces that we have, it feels like we were in a contest to see who could add the most ruffles onto this little guy. And I guess I kind of started that right from piece one, but you have to love it when a friend can like match your energy on something that ridiculous. So now I have to assemble all of this into something. And I'm trying not to psych myself out at the moment just because the thing that I made last time, the cat Urpilla, has to be one of the favorite things I've made ever. And that's a lot of pressure. To put on a bunch of dismembered pieces. You supervise from over there, okay? At this point, I think I'm going to speed this up and just see what kinds of shapes I can make and see what I come up with. Okay, so idea one is kind of like a pot plant monster, a monstera, if you will. So idea number two, it's kind of like a flower butt turtle duck kind of situation. So it scuttles along this way, so that's actually kind of more of a tail. We call it a duck tail. Ooh. Okay, so I feel like I'm getting closer to something. So it's almost like a weird like otter butterfly kind of vibe. We're definitely we're definitely getting closer to something that I like, I think. Right, after many hours of, of trying different things, I think I'm finally on to something. So now I just want to make these pieces in a different colour. And we'll come back for the final reveal. So piece one, where I decided to make the frill an accent colour and do this yellow spot on the back where it's going to join into the body. Piece two, got some stripes. Though I did keep the colour change mandated in the pattern and added the same accent to sort of the tip as well. Then I made piece three, and I did decide to make six of these, and I decided to give them yellow tips. So piece four with the little roses, and I decided to make them two-toned, and I decided to snap my eyes on through the middle of them to turn them into eye sockets. So piece five got the two-tone treatment as well to blend it in with the rest of the body and the head. So piece six I ended up making in a darker shade of one of my existing colours just to help it both stand out and go with the rest of the colours that I've chosen here today. And I have made 
two of those. So those were my pieces. And then I assembled. So there is my finished Franken pattern too. So he gives me kind of chameleon vibes, like an insect chameleon, but he does at least feel, I think, like he's part of the same world as our caterpillar. <laughs> no, chameleon. I suppose that Woff Woff goes with cat opilla. He does look like his valiant mule. Right, like if you saw them on the same tree branch, hmm. you wouldn't really question it. Can I make a request for this one to make him look like he matches with him? No, he doesn't get he's, saddlebags. He's got the perfect little spot for saddlebags right here. He's right? not getting saddlebags. This little brown <laughs> leather saddlebags and a little harness goes in. Okay, so now the time has come for me to see how Lee did. If you want to see how Lee did, you have to go watch her video. So. <laughs> oh, I love the colours. I think we used the same piece the same way there, which sucks because I thought I had done something really tricky with it. <laughs> got to keep the feedback vague. I don't want to give any hints. No hints. No hints for you guys. You got to have to go watch it for yourselves. Is that a double ruffle? Lee, did you double ruffle? I love how different they look. Oh god, they they came out so differently again, and I love that. That one there totally looks like it could hang out with these two, and you wouldn't question it for a second, particularly in those colours, like. Oh, it's so good. So unlike the first one, there are changes that I would make to this little guy. Uh, largely to do with the jellyfish base of the head and the spiky circle that I used as the mouth. So both pieces I designed, I am, I am the problem here. <laughs> so welcome to the Franken family. I officially dub thee Chug, because you're a chameleon and a pug. Eh? So what do you guys think? Did you like the added element of the challenges or should we nix them next time we do this? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, make sure you go and watch Lee's video. I'm sure I peppered this video with reminders to do that already, but that's what I'm off to go do now. But that's it for today. I'll see you next week with another round of Pattern Roulette. Okay, bye.